Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday broadcast. We are glad you joined us. The Bible says in Psalms 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I welcome our praise team to lead us in worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're glad that you joined us this morning. Worship the Lord with us. God desires your worship and he loves you today. I've a home prepared where the saints abide. Just over in thy glory land. Oh, as I long to be.
Good morning. I'm so glad you've joined us on the Bonneview Ministries Facebook page on this 22nd day of March 2020. We are definitely living in very interesting times. I'm sure you feel the same way as I do. On the one hand, it's very alarming, but on the other hand, I know that our lives are in the hands of the Lord and there's no safer place for us to be. Thank you again for logging in this morning and we hope that this broadcast will be a blessing to you. I want us to, before we begin and go into the word of the Lord today, I'm going to ask you right there, wherever you are in your living room or your uh, whatever family room you're in, or hopefully you're joined together with your family, if you would, to bow your heads with me together and let's pray and ask the Lord's blessings today as we look into the word of God. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity we have to connect together with our church family as well as all of the other people that will be logging in. I pray that your blessings would rest upon this broadcast. Lord, I pray that you would bless our time together in the word of God. And most importantly, Lord, I ask you to protect all of the citizens of our country and around the world, Lord. We ask for your safety and your help, your wisdom and your guidance, Lord, in regards to the current situation we're in in our world. And we thank you for that. And we give you honor and praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention this morning to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. And we're going to be taking a look at the writings of the Apostle Paul to this particular body of believers. And there is a chapter that is very well known among Christians, and it's a chapter that discusses many of the heroes of faith. But I want to read for you in Hebrews 11 and verse number 1. And then we're going to talk about some of the heroes of faith. But the Bible tells us this. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it, that is to say, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. And so today I want to title this simply that we belong to God. Now, when we look to the word of God, the 11th chapter of Hebrews is one of what I would call a great treasure of Christian experience. It's a great treasure of the Christian faith because this chapter tells something to us about the meaning and the strength, the beauty and the achievement of people of faith and how because they operated in faith and exercised their faith in God, God did many miraculous things through their lives. And many of them, even though uh, they were gifted in their own way, uh, each and every one of them bringing different characteristics to their walk with God that were a blessing to God's people and God's work, at the end of the day, it was not just their ability, it was not their strength, it was not their intellectual abilities that was able to get the job done. It was the power of God. It was their faith in God. And I would say that it's no different for us today in 2020. Whether we're facing a global pandemic or whether we're having uh, perfect uh, times in our lives, uh, we must exercise faith in God. We must believe in God. And the reality is that when we do find ourselves in trouble, that is a time for people of faith to really shine and come to the forefront. And so I want to encourage every believer that's watching this broadcast today. Today is not a day to panic. It's not a day to worry. It's not a day for Christians to go run and hide and batten down the hatches and just wait for this to be over. This is a day for Christians to exercise their faith. And you can do that right in your own household, with your own family, with your own children. I want to encourage you to speak faith to your family. I want to encourage you to speak faith on social media. I want to encourage you to believe God. I said it at the beginning of this broadcast and I will say it again. We are in the hands of God. We belong to God. And that is the safest place that you and I could be is in his hands because there's nothing, not one single thing that takes God by surprise. The word of God teaches us that he knows the end from the beginning. That means that God knows what's going to happen tomorrow before you and I I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Matter of fact, the word of God gets so specific about how much God cares for us that the word of God tells us that he even knows how many hairs are on
are on our head. A, a God that would pay that much attention to a human being is a God that cares about the big things and he cares about the little things. I want to submit to you today, we belong to God. We're in his hands and God is going to take care of us. I stop and think as I read this book of Hebrews and I look at this chapter of faith and I look at the powerful stories of the many heroes of Christianity and how by faith they were able to accomplish what they did. It makes me pause and look back over my own life and see the many times that we have depended on God, that God came through for us. And the many times that the Lord not only heard our prayers, but the Lord answered our prayers. I'm sure if we were to ask you to also mention the times that the Lord had heard your prayer and answered your prayer, we all could give many, many instances of that. I want to encourage us in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of a, uh, an uncertain financial outlook here in these United States of America, that what the church needed 2,000 years ago, what Israel needed when they were in slavery in Egypt all those thousands of years ago, what the Apostle Paul needed, what every believer needed, whether it was the 1600s, the 1700s, the 1900s, or today, is to simply believe God. To simply trust God and know that God has a plan for your life and he has a plan for my life. I am a firm believer that nothing happens by accident when you put your life in the hands of the Lord. He knows the end from the beginning. And the word of God is very clear and says that he is going to be the one that will order the steps of those that would believe in him. For the steps of good men and good women are ordered of the Lord. I want you to know I'm a happy preacher today to know that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Praise God. Now, let's get back to this uh, verse that I've read for you. Hebrews 11 and verse number one. The chapter begins with a powerful declaration Three words that begin this chapter. Those words are as follows. Now faith is. But it does not stop right there. The scripture goes on and moves immediately to illustrate to us what exactly that faith is. When you study it, you will find that those words by faith appear 18 times in the chapter. And then eager to continue writing about it but lacking the words or the creativity or the ability to adequately describe the power of faith, uh, the writer just finally summarizes it all and he says, uh, what more can I say? Time would fail me if I tell of all that happened through faith. You know, we don't have to go to the Word of God to tell the same story. Uh, we value the Word of God, but right here at Bonneview Ministries, we're in our 75th year of ministry here in Kaiser, West Virginia. And when I look back at the elders of the faith that helped to build this church, that have maintained this church, that have faithfully lived for God over the years, we have our own stories of heroes of the faith. Matter of fact, many of them are buried right now out at Potomac Memorial Gardens right outside of Kaiser. And there's coming a day when those heroes of the faith will come out of that grave when the Lord comes back. I'm so glad for not just the stories we read of Abraham and Jacob and all of the powerful men and women of God of the Scripture, but I thank God for the men and women of God that I have known and that are part of the history of our church. Uh, those of you that are members of other churches no doubt have uh, your own stories and examples of people of faith and, and how they stood for God in uncertain times and how the Lord always backed them up. That's what I love about this story right here. From Genesis to Revelation, you find a real God that helps real people that live in the real world that have real trouble and real problems and real worries. So I want to encourage you today to believe in Him. If He could cause the sun to uh, hang in its spot in this universe and, and make the planets orbit around the sun and hang the moon and the stars, then what we're going through right now is small uh, when we think of how big God is. God is infinite. He's eternal. He's all-knowing. There's not one thing God is not able to do. And then... Just to go back to the book of Hebrews again in, in chapter number 11 and throughout this book, we have a list of shout outs naming some of the heroes and then it even leaves some of them unnamed and shows us how 
through faith, they faced life on its hard side and how they overcame triumphantly. I'm going to tell you, when the economy fails, when sickness comes, when pandemics come, and, and, and even the, uh, the smartest people are scratching their heads trying to figure out what to do, uh, when difficulty comes, when, when things go wrong in this world as they will often do, uh, there is one that will never make a mistake. There's one that will never fail. There's one that will never leave us and never forsake us. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have said it and, and we've repeated it and we've quoted it and we've quoted it again time and again and said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. We've talked about the promise that he made that, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I think sometimes we've repeated it so often that those phrases become trite. They become repetitive and maybe we forget the reality and the power of those promises. Lo, I am with you always, always. I'm always with you. I'm never going to leave you. I'm never going to forsake you. I can tell you what a God we serve. What a God. Uh, what a promise he's made to people of faith that will stand up and believe God and exercise their faith. I want to encourage you right there, wherever you are today with your family, to believe God, to exercise your faith. I know that many of you that are watching you have needs in your life that go above and beyond the pandemic. Maybe uh, you've struggled with depression. Maybe there have been financial issues or maybe there is sickness in your family. Maybe there are difficulties with your children or maybe in your marriage or w whatever the problem may be. I know every one of us carries our own struggles and often we carry them silently. I want you to know you can believe in God. You can trust in God right there where you're seated right now. You can call on God. I, I, I'm reminded of, of a man that I would call a hero of the faith, a, a man that the Bible says was a man who was after God's own heart. And yet he was a man that was very broken and a fallen individual by the name of King David. If there was a sin that a human being could commit, you can guarantee that King David had committed it. He lied. He was guilty of murder. He was guilty of adultery. He, he was guilty of so many things and, and made such a mess of his life. And yet, in the midst of all of that, he knew how to connect with God. And I want to encourage you today. You may, maybe you've made mistakes in your life. I know I've made mistakes in my life. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, when all the mistakes are done and, and what's done is done... We can't go back and change it. Uh, but one thing I know is that regardless of what's happened in life, we can still connect with God. You can still touch God and God can touch you. Matter of fact, there's not one thing that can separate you from God. Didn't the writer say what can separate us from the love of God? And then proceeded to list so many things uh, and declared to us that nothing, not one thing could separate us from the love of God. There's nothing you could ever say that would separate you from his love. There's nothing you would do that would separate him, separate you from his love. His love is infinite. Uh, and I thank God for his love today. I feel the love of God as I just mentioned it. That's what's so wonderful about God. Whenever you start talking about God, guess what? God shows up. I want to encourage you. Whatever you need from the Lord today, uh, exercise your faith. Believe in God today. I'm telling you, God can do it. Uh, he's a God that answers prayer. You know, after all that David did, all the mistakes he made, all the sins that he made, David cried unto the Lord, the Bible says, and then under the inspiration of God, he wrote several of the books of, uh, of the Psalms, several of those chapters. And in one particular instance, uh, he talked about how in my distress and in my trouble, I called on the Lord and my prayer went into his holy tabernacle and the Lord heard my prayer. I don't know if that blesses you like it does me, but I believe that when I call on the name of the Lord, my cry, my prayer goes to the ears of the Lord. I believe God hears our prayers. Now, I know there's people out there, maybe you are cynical about religion. Maybe you're saying, well, preacher, I, I want to believe what you're saying. It all sounds really good, but do you really believe there's a real God that cares about real people and answers prayer? I'm going to tell you, I absolutely believe in a real God that cares about real people. People that are broken, people that have trouble, people that don't know what to do, people that don't know where to turn. I believe in that God, and I want you to know that God's reaching for you today. 
I want to encourage you. Don't let what you may consider as being wrong with you or your life stop you from worshiping what's right with God. God makes no mistakes. He is perfect. He's omniscient. He's all powerful. And what's so wonderful about God is that he's a loving God. I don't know what your experience with church or religion is. Uh, oftentimes Christianity has been uh, painted in a very negative light in our world. But uh, when I look back over my experience with God, sure, there have been people that have disappointed me. There have been uh, people that haven't always done things the way I've wanted them to do. We've all been offended by people. We've all been hurt in life in some form or fashion. But I can tell you my experience with God has been nothing but positive. I will tell you that there's not one time that I have reached out to the Lord that I didn't feel God show up and help me. There's not one time that I have prayed and asked God for guidance over my family, my ministry, our church, our lives, that the Lord didn't show up. My brothers and sisters, hear this preacher today. We belong to God. And because we belong to God, that means something. Uh, there is a certain protection, a certain power. There's a certain provision that comes when you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. You might be sitting there and saying, well, preacher, what do I do? How, what does that mean to belong to God? How, how do I connect to God? You're, you're talking about bringing my needs to Him. You're talking about praying and Him answering. I want to encourage you. You don't have to pray a prayer like Billy Graham would pray. You don't have to pray a prayer like the Pope would pray. You don't have to pray a prayer like a, a famous television preacher would pray. All you have to do is talk to the Lord like He's your best friend or your mom or your dad or your spouse uh, and just communicate with God. The scripture is very clear to us uh, in the uh, book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter number two, at the start of the church, you will find that Peter began to preach the word of God to them. There had been a great outpouring of the spirit of the living God in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost, and it caused no small stir in Jerusalem. And when that happened, there was a lot of confusion that uh, happened in the city and people were questioning, what, what's happening here? What, what, what is God doing here? And then Peter, who I may remind you, was the man that had denied the Lord not one time, not two times, but he had denied the Lord three times. And now in Acts chapter number two, he preaches the very first sermon of the new church that was created in Jerusalem. And as he begins to preach, he talks about how it was because of our sins, it was because of our iniquities and our transgressions uh, that they had crucified the Lord, that they humiliated him, that they spat upon him, that they put a crown of thorns on his head, they beat him, they, they did anything that you could imagine. It, it was even more horrible than what you and I could imagine. And then they made him carry the cross up to that hill called Golgotha. And then they nailed his hands and they nailed his feet into that cross and they hung him high. And they stretched him wide and all of hell was having a party and everybody thought it was all over and the disciples thought their lives had come to an end. But that's how God works. Whenever things look, uh, look as if they are at their worst, uh, that is the opportunity for God's best to shine. Uh, our God does his best work in the dark. Uh, well, you don't need me to tell you the story. Three days later, after they put him in a grave, he came up out of the grave. He came up out of the grave in all power, all authority, all dominion. And because of that, you and I can also be made alive. And so uh, Peter preaches this message to the people. Acts chapter 2, uh, verse number 37, the crowd responds to what Peter said. And here's what they say. And when they heard this, that is to say his preaching, and you can read it in Acts chapter number 2, starting in verse 14. He preaches all the way down to verse number 36. The Bible says when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart or they felt, they felt guilty. They felt godly sorrow. They realized who it was that they had crucified. They realized who the Lord Jesus really was, that he really was the Messiah. He was the one that came and bled and died for our sins. He was the one that was going to bring new life to us. And so uh, they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter, under the inspiration of God, began to preach. And the Bible says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Or uh, if you prefer to say Holy Spirit, uh, it's simply the Spirit of God. And then he continued, and this is the part I like. 
He said that the promise, what promise? The promise he just mentioned. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. He said in verse 39, the promise is unto you. That is to say all the people that were there present. It's to your children and to all. Do you know what that word all means? It means all. It means everybody. To all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now I'm going to be the first to tell you. I'm not going to get on here and make all kind of predictions and prophecies and say that this pandemic is happening because of this. I'm not going to say all that. I'm not going to waste your time, my time, or God's time with all that kind of stuff. But what I am going to tell you is that the scripture said, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Pandemic or no pandemic, the Lord is calling people. The Lord is reaching for people. God wants to help people. He wants to love people. So I want to encourage you, get the religion out of the way. Get the formalities out of the way. Get, get the traditions out of the way. You just got to get to Jesus. If you're depressed, you got to get to Jesus. If you're sad, you got to get to Jesus. If you don't know where to turn, you just got to get to Jesus. If you're frustrated with life, you got to get to Jesus. If you're unhappy in your job, you got to get to Jesus. If you're worried about how you're going to pay your mortgage over the next month, you got to get to Jesus. Listen, he's not intimidated by any of this. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. That's the kind of God I'm preaching about today. A God that, that loves us. A God that's going to help us. A God that's going to stand in the gap. I can promise you, He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you in a time of trouble. I'm going to tell you what, if we as Americans would get on our knees and call on the name of the Lord, I'm telling you, anything's possible. Well, do you believe that, preacher? I'm telling you, I believe it. I'm telling you, anything is possible when you believe in God. Matter of fact, the Lord promised us that. He said, anything, anything, ask anything in my name and I will do it. Praise God. Now think about that. His name, what is wrapped up in his name? Well, the name of Jesus is the name of God that is revealed in salvation. The, the power, the majesty, the glory of that name. English fails to adequately have words to describe the name of Jesus. If you ask anything in my name, well, bless God, I want a new Ferrari. Well, I don't think that's what he meant. But the needs of life. The real needs, the real struggles, the things that you think about when you lay your head on your pillow at night that maybe nobody else even knows. That, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a real God for real people in trying times that are very, very real. And that's where we're living today. I want to encourage you today. If you've not repented of your sins, I want to encourage you to do so. Sounds like a big religious word. It just means to ask God to forgive us of our sins. And here's the reality. All of us are sinners. We were all born sinners, every single one of us. And I've got news for you. Republican families give birth to sinners. And Democrat families give birth to sinners. And American families give birth to sinners. And Italian families give birth to sinners. But I've got good news for all of us. We don't have to remain a sinner. Uh, the second thing that you've got to do, according to the Word of God, and it's in there, is you must be baptized. You must be baptized in water by immersion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that's his name. That's the name where all power is, is in the name of Jesus Christ. And then you're promised to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. If you have not experienced that, I want to encourage you. Call me. Call the church. Connect with someone. We want to pray with you. We want to be a blessing to you. I'm so glad that you have joined in today for this webcast. And before we end, I want to pray one more time for you and your family and pray the blessings of God upon you. And I want you to believe God right there where you're seated right now with your family. We're going to pray and ask God for help. Would you help me pray right now? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for all of the wonderful people that are viewing this webcast. Every family, every mom, every dad, every teenager, every child, every baby. I pray that the blessings of God would touch this community, Lord. I'm asking you, move God in Kaiser. Move in Mineral County. Move in the surrounding counties, Lord, Allegheny County and Garrett County and Hampshire County, Lord, and our friends all around the world that may be watching, Lord. I pray that the power of God would move in our lives. I pray that the Holy Ghost would be poured out. I pray that people's lives will be touched and changed. And Lord, I ask you to help us as we deal with this pandemic. I pray for the economy. I pray for our leaders, God, our government officials, Lord, the doctors and the scientists that are helping in the pandemic. We ask for your help, Lord, and we trust you, Lord God, and know that you will be there for us. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. Lord, I love you tonight. I thank you for your goodness to my life. 
And I pray you'll bless all of your wonderful people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I hope you'll join us Wednesday, 7 o'clock. We'll be doing another Bible study this week. Also, I want to make you aware that we do have online giving set up at our church website, www.bonnieviewministries.com. On the right-hand side, there's a tab that you'll click, and it will open up a uh, secure window that is encrypted for you to be able to give uh, through uh, an application called Tithely. I want to encourage you to continue supporting the church even in the midst of these uncertain times, uh, and may the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you again.